civil geometry tools that are available if you have inroads or geopack installed. On the task navigation pane on the left hand side there's a task for civil geometry and I'm going to begin by showing you a very simple civil geometry and geometric relationship between a line and an arc and then I'm going to uh, continue on with some more examples and actually build a, an intersection with curb returns and tapers. To begin I'm just going to go again to my civil geometry and place a line between points. Now just like any microstation tool you pick the tool and you check your tool settings. So I could define the distance and direction from the tool settings window or what I'm going to do here is just hit two data points in the view and when you're using the civil geometry tools you'll notice that on your cursor you do have a input area so I could key in a distance there as well otherwise just by placing a second data point I would be able to place that, that civil geometry line. Now what I want to do is show you if you select the civil geometry with the element information tool you'll be able to get the information about that line and then you'll be able to get the handles to be able to modify it. So I can actually go in here and select the length of the element and when I pick on that I actually get a key and field so I can say if I want to make that exactly 500 feet I type in 500 hit enter and that line automatically updates same with the direction if I want the direction of the line to be 12 degrees all I have to do is identify it hit enter and the line updates now I also have like I said these um, trim and extend arrows that I can take the line and drag it interactively or I can grab the handle here and move it and actually pick it up and move it. And you can see dynamically that the, the values are updating for me as I go. Now what I'm going to do here is show you that geometric relationship. And I'm going to do that by placing an arc from element. So when you do a tool from uh, whether it's a line or an arc from element then it knows that it was generated from that previous element so it'll keep its geometric relationship and again check your tool settings some of these values if I know them I could fill them in as I go um, or I can use the heads up prompt in my cursor so the first thing it's asking me to do is locate that element so I'm going to locate that element and I can enter my offset so I want it to be right from the end point of the line so I'll hit enter zero and then left click to accept that and then it's asking me for my start point so I'm going to again snap into the end point of that line as a start point and now you can see dynamically as I move my cursor I can get my radius in here so if I want it to be exactly 250 hit enter and then left click to accept that and now I can give my arc length or if I hit the arrow right I get the sweep angle so if I can toggle through with the uh, tangent direction arc length and sweep angle I have those three choices for that final input and I'm going to do sweep angle and set it to 75 degrees and then left click to accept it so now what's happened is I've got this geometry line and then arc from element so I can come in here and again select the value and change it to 275 and have it update for me but if I pick that original line and then move that point notice how the arc stays tangent to that alignment or that geometry so again that's the geometric relationship that these civil geometry tools have and I'm going to use that when I build the intersection over here so let me uh, begin by deleting this and now I'll go over to my intersection to show you a few more tools. I want to start by just showing you that I do have a civil geometry line already placed in the design file and what I'm going to do is draw a line to this element. So I'm going to go for my civil geometry and I want to do a line to an element. So again you select your tool, check your tool settings, again I'll do this as I go so I'm going to uncheck these values and then follow my prompts it's asking me to enter the endpoint so I'm going to end it somewhere out here and then I want to locate the element because it's going to that element so I'm going to select the element I'm going to and now it's asking me for the offset so I want it to be right to the line so the value is going to be zero left click to accept that and now here's where I identify the skew and you can see I get two solutions here one or two 
but I want to be perpendicular to this other alignment, so I'm going to type in 90, hit enter, and then left click to accept it. And then the start distance. Again, this line is being generated from the line I'm drawing it to, but I want it to be intersected, so it'll be start distance of zero, and then left click to accept that. And then we have the ability to trim. So I could trim this corner up if I wanted to, but right now for this example, I'll select none. Otherwise, there's the back or none. So I'm just going to left click to accept that. So now that I've got that, if I select this line that I just placed, you'll notice that I get the information about it. And again, if I come in here and switch this from 90 degrees to 87 degrees, you can see how that line updates to that element. And I'm just going to control Z or undo to set that back to 90. Now if I want to get the edge of pavement lines in here, I'm just going to uh, set my level to um, pavement edge and then there is a set of offsets and tapers that I can use when working with civil geometry. And we'll show you just a couple of these. The first one I'm going to do is a single offset entire, standard offset. I'm just going to locate the element. Again, in my heads up prompt here, I'm going to type in 15 and hit enter. And then left click to accept it. Same thing on the other side, 15, enter left click to accept it and then for the side road I'll do the same 15 and 15 so now I have those offsets and it began because the offsets were created from the alignment if I take this alignment and move it notice how the offsets also go with that alignment so I'm building all this geometric relationship based on these two lines that I started with and then two, if I go to and move this point that has that alignment associated to it, it also updates. Now the next thing that I want to do is build in the tapers and curb returns for this intersection. So there's a tool set for that. Under Arc, I'm going to open Complex Arcs Between Elements Toolbox. And I can do a simple arc. I can do a spiral, curve, spiral. I can do a three center curve, two center curve, a arc between elements, but what I want to do is a taper curve taper for this intersection. So for this intersection on the north side, um, the radius is going to be 35. And again, this is where I was saying that you can either fill these values in in the tool settings window or in the heads up display. And this one you actually want to do in the tool settings window because there's not the same um, heads up displays that you would see in this dialog box. So I'm going to come in here and manually type in some values here. I know the radius on the north is going to be a 35 foot. And then my method for the back taper, what I'm going to call the back taper is going to be along the uh, main line here. And I'm going to set that to be a length offset so that the length of the taper is going to be 50 feet. And then the offset is going to be 5 feet. And then on the head taper, which it ties into the uh, side road here, I'm going to use the option for ratio offset. So that offset is going to be set to 3 feet, and the ratio is going to be 1 to 10. So with the values filled in, now it's asking me to locate the first element, which will be the main line here, and then identify the second element. And you can see, based on what I filled in here, let me pan around, you can see the values that are filling in to the uh, geometry for the taper curve taper. I've got the length of 50, offset of 5, radius of 35, ratio 10 to 1, and an offset of 3. So it's using all those values to build that um, taper curve taper for me. So everything looks good, everything's locked in. I'm going to left click to accept it. And this, again, is where the trim comes in. This time I want to trim these elements back, kind of like a fillet command. So I want to do it to both the um, ahead and back. If I hit the drop-down arrow, I could go to none, back, ahead, or both. And again, like I said, I want to do both. So we're going to accept that. And here I've got my taper, curve taper. And again, if I come in here and select that element 2, 
modify the degree, notice how everything updates based on that alignment. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now. I'll use the same taper curve taper. This time the radius is going to be 70 foot. The back taper is going to be length offset. Length being 75, offset being 5. And then the head taper is going to be ratio offset. Offset 3, taper 10 to 1. And again, locate the first element. And you'll notice that that element was trimmed, but I can still come in here and it still knows that there's some geometry there that could be used. So I'm going to select that. So I'm going to locate that as the first point, even though it's been trimmed. And then I want to locate the second element. And again, it found it automatically because it's still geometry and it can still be used even though visually it's been trimmed. So I can come in here and you can see again the length is 75, the offset's 5. I'm using a radius of 70 foot and I got a 10 to 1 taper, offset 3 foot. Left click to accept that. Trimming again, I want to set it to both. Accept that. Notice how that geometry came back based on that taper. So with all this intersection built, I can go into my element selection, pick this alignment that was drawn to the original and then move this alignment up and down the main line and get a new intersection being drawn when keeping its geometric relationship. Modify the angle. Everything stays geometrically based on how it was created. If I come in here and move one of these points that it was generated the other one, again everything stays the way it was supposed to be based on the um, rules when it was built. This concludes our tutorial with working with civil geometry and showing the geometric relationship between the tools. For more tips and tutorials, please visit our website, envisioncad.com. Thanks for watching.